Welcome back to the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin Sully, and joining me on today's episode, NCAA 1500 meter champion, Yared Nagus of Notre Dame. Yared, thank you so much for coming on. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for having me. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. I'd first like to know just how is it being back on campus? You guys are one of the conferences, one of the teams that is still competing. What's it like uh, at Notre Dame right now? Yeah, you know, I'm feeling very fortunate to be back. Um, it's definitely been quite the adjustment, getting used to, you know, how different everything is. We have all these uh, different, you know, precautions set in place in class and in practice to kind of make sure that, uh, you know, we all stay safe and that we still get to stay here. But um, we've got, we kind of gotten past the adjustment period. And I think now it's, uh, we're finally getting into the groove of things a bit as um, we get to near October. Mm -hmm. How different is your class setup? Or do you have mostly online? Is it a hybrid method? How is that? Yeah, so uh, most of my classes are in-person classes. Um, I'm only in like one online one right now, but I think all the professors at the beginning could choose if like they want to do online based on, um, you know, like if they're if they're older, then they don't want to be like exposed to anything at all. So you know, my Italian professor, he, um, he has his class online. And, um, but I think for the, mo for the most part, most people are doing uh, in-person classes up until um, the year ends, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about, what about practice? I know the common way to organize this stuff is they keep talking about in pods and for running and distance running, a lot of times you have, you know, sort of training groups anyway, people that, that you train with, um, has it been has it been different moving towards that sort of setup? What's what's a practice like now that's different from you know a 2019 or 2018 practice for you? Yeah. So one thing uh, that we're really missing out on is kind of you know the giant group dynamic we had in a lot of our practices. We really enjoyed having just like you know all the cross country guys together on like an easy run or something, just going out there with like this massive pack of like you know 30 to 40 guys just going at it. So now we are doing like a kind of group system um, that uh, Carlson, my coach, kind of just made at the beginning of the year. We're each in a groups of about 10. And, um, you know, even if we're going on like the same easy run path, like we all, our groups are like pretty distant from each other. And then, you know, you can only really like practice, stretch, um, cool down, work out, whatever in those separate groups. And then, you know, if, if like a COVID case did happen, then you'd only be attached to like that group at all. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And is that group dictated based on event preference, ability level? How is it broken down? Because I know sometimes you live with people on a team who aren't necessarily competing directly with you, and then you could expose those folks as well. Yeah, uh, I think it's more of a more of a. Well, we kind of have like a few groups dedicated to like cross country, and then like a group for like mid distance, and then um, you know more th those groups are kind of more separated on ability at least like from recent workouts or like races and whatnot. Um, and I know like, you're right. Like I'm, I'm personally live in a house like with other like mid distance runners. And so that's kind of where like, you know, the system is like a little flawed, but I think, uh, you know, for the most part, just making sure at practice that if anything could spread that, you know, we keep it to the groups and, you know, we still stay safe. Like overall, even when we're in our groups, like always wearing masks and like, trying to stay socially distant if possible, but, um, you know, just like taking all the precautions necessary to make sure nothing horrible happens. Mm -hmm. Does it still feel when you go to class, does it still feel like a regular college experience when you go to practice? Does it still feel like the same old team? Yeah, I think uh, they've really done a really good job of making sure like things are kind of similar to the things they were before. Um, you know, other than like the fact that we have classes in like weird buildings or like like uh, music halls now, just because they have more space to accommodate a bunch of students, I think uh, you know it just feels like a normal day. I go to class morning and the afternoon, and then after all that, I get to go to practice and just hang out with my teammates, at least the ones in my group, and um, you know just kind of try to make the best of like the situation we're in. And how did you how did you spend the summer, both in terms of training and just terms of how you lived your life coming off of indoor championships being canceled and all of the the spring season? What was your summer like? Hmm. So I spent um, 
like about half my summer at home and then the other half i kind of came here early uh, i had the lease in my house open up pretty early so i took that time to just size like come back get settled and kind of get used to like living on my own because i hadn't really lived like off campus until that point um i didn't really do anything i mean there wasn't really anything to do like particularly interesting but um <laughs> So I, I was mostly just kind of hanging out with um, any of my other roommates who came early and um, I guess just kind of getting, you know, used to the new reality. Uh, training wise, after I found out like that, um, that indoor was canceled and we decided like we weren't really going to do any other races until like, you know, cross country started. Um, I had like a few weeks breaks, of course, to just kind of like, you know, take a break from the indoor season that happened. And then, uh, kind of just got back into it again, you know, building up mileage and then getting ready for the season to come. Mm -hmm. Take me back to indoors because a lot, everybody was impacted by that, but you were potentially looking at, you know, one title, maybe a couple others. You were running so well in, in March. What was your immediate reaction when you found out the meet was not going to take place? I know it was definitely, um, it felt like really unreal at first, you know, we were just kind of sitting there and then, you know, one of, one of the guys texts like, oh, the meat's off. And you're just like, oh, that's like a weird joke or something. But, you know, and then you go over <laughs> there and you find out, oh, no, it's it's actually off. And so you're kind of just stuck in that, like, disbelief and shock for a long time. And, um, you know, just taking it all in at first. And then, of course, you know, you're going to be really sad. I was really, really upset with what had happened. But, you know, you can't, like, really be mad because it was, like, the right choice to make given the situation. Um, but of course it doesn't mean it's still not like, you know, a painful thing to endure. You know, you can logically reason it out, but like it still hurts like emotionally. So um, it definitely took me a while to kind of like, you know, get over that. And then once they ca canceled outdoor, it was like, oh, well, that doesn't really hurt as bad because like you already hit with the fact that indoor was canceled. Um, but, but, you know, at that point my coach talked about just like focusing on the things that you can change and the things that you know you do control because obviously it was completely out of any of our control so you know moving forward it's like how you take that and how you respond to it in like you know a responsible way not making any like rash decisions because uh the season got canceled so you know i stayed like pretty i tried to stay like pretty level-headed about it um but obviously i wasn't like you know not feeling upset about it Mm -hmm. Well, especially your guys' strength in the DMR. That's one of the only events that's you know specific to to indoors. You can't you can't recreate that even if there were to be an outdoor season. So I can imagine it hit you guys pretty hard. How do you think? I'm going to ask you to to predict, but how do you think that that meet would have gone for you and and with outdoors? Just based on how you were running, it looked and in even going back to cross country, it looked like you were trending even better than you were. You know, last year when you won the NCAA title, do you think do you think you w were in a position to win win some uh, titles in in Albuquerque and then carry that to to outdoor as well? Yeah, I think definitely we came in the mindset of coming in like you know winning the DMR or something that we're very capable of doing. Uh, of course, there was Oregon and we knew that would be a big competition, but uh, I think we were all like pretty confident in our abilities at that point. I think it would have been a really interesting race to watch, honestly, but. Um, you know, we didn't get to see that. But I really do think that our team uh, could have pulled it together and then won that. Um, and then my my 3K, probably, I, I didn't have, like, you know, any real expectations. I was more of, like, a see what I can still do after running, like, that really hard DMR. Um, you know, whether that be, like, winning or even just, like, getting, like, podium or something. Uh, whatever the case, I was, I was definitely more focused on the DMR going into it and just kind of, like, seeing what I still had left afterwards. Uh, then going into outdoor, um, I I also didn't really have any, <laughs> I didn't have any like huge goals at the start. Um, you know, that was, that was supposed to be the Olympic year. So we were thinking about that, but I think uh, just from like a national college scale, I was like really, you know, excited to like kind of go out there and probably try it at the 1500 again. Um, I wasn't really sure if I was like gonna branch out to any other events or anything, but I think a big part of that would be just like, you know, that year was, I was kind of planning on more like exploring, seeing how fast I can go and, to, you know, like not 
not focusing too specifically on um, strategic races, but just kind of like seeing, you know, what kind of ability I have. Um, and you can only do that in like, you know, in a race where you go all out and you're not really focused on um, a specific like strategy or anything. But mm -hmm. do you think you had a chance to make the Olympic team in the 1500? Um, I, I think so. I, <laughs> I'm not like, um, you know, super confident about or anything, but I think it would have been, <laughs> I think it would have been at least uh, nice to see and try and just like, you know, kind of just see what I was capable of. I know like my coach, you know, he's always like, oh yeah, like absolutely. But, you know, he's my coach. So it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> but I think, um, I think it, it, it definitely could have been in the cards for me uh, if I had been given that chance. Yeah. One of my co-hosts on this show, Gordon, is a uh, he's a, he's buying Yared Nagu stock currently. I think he called you the biggest sleeper in the fifteen hundred. He he he's like Centro solid, Angles is solid, but you know that third spot it could have been up for grabs. It could have been him when we play all these hypotheticals. Do you feel like I mean now that you have an extra year though going into it, does that does that raise the pressure uh, or does that take some of it off or have no impact? I think. Um... You know, with an extra year of experience, it kind of just makes things a little bit, I guess, kind of easier for me just, you know, being able to like feel more relaxed and probably more confident since I have had like a whole nother year of racing. You know, I think mm -hmm. at the beginning, I was just like, you know, like everyone is, you're like really nervous about performing well or performing at all. And um, as I've, you know, gotten older and like gone through sophomore and junior year, I've been able to gain like more confidence in my races and that's really helped me like keep a calm mentality which is like really important in a mile to kind of stay calm when you're you know running as fast as you can um and so i think with an extra year it'll like it'll hopefully be easier for me to just kind of stay calm and stay focused during um uh, a race if i did try to go out for the olympic trials again mm -hmm. what who do you who do you pattern yourself after, like on the pro scene? Is there anybody who racing style you particularly admire or just their progression really resonates with you? Um, I'm, I'm not like super knowledgeable on um, pro runners or, or, or runners in general, really. I'm, I, I, I usually just stay pretty like um, focused on what I'm doing and I never like, you know, grew up like looking at all these pro runners or anything so i'm not i'm yeah i'm just not too sure <laughs> wow that's okay wait so so you grew up uh you know obviously running and succeeding at a relatively young age but there was no nobody you were patterning yourself like nobody you looked up to at all in the sport even at your high school or in your area at all i mean um Not, I don't know, not like especially. I, I mean, at least, of course, I had role models, but not like role models in like you're like a running sense. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. like I never, I never really like you know did research or like looked into really fast runners and like kind of found out like their stories or how they progressed. I honestly like don't know like a ton of fast runners, and my team makes fun of me for it all the time. Like right. it's just they're like really fast person that I definitely should know. And I'm just like, oh, who's that? And they're like, oh, Yarit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so what do you, I mean, everybody uh, wastes their time doing something. Uh, sounds like a lot of the guys on your team waste their team, waste some of their time looking up uh, who the fast runners are in the world. Maybe they call it research. What do you, what do you spend your, your free time doing? Are you into following other sports or other activities? Yeah, uh, I've never... I was never like really like a huge like sports kind of person growing up. Uh, so when I do have free time, it's usually to like, I mean, I'm like a big like video game person, I guess. Um, I'm a big fan of like Nintendo games like Mario Kart or something, just kind of, you know, fun party games like that. Um, I'm also a big fan of like cooking, I guess. It's not like really like a, a fun hobby, but I, I just like really enjoy uh you know, cooking because I love eating so much. And so, you know, cooking is kind of like the, the follow-up step to that. And uh, I get to make like a lot of like, things now that I'm living in a, a house by myself or not by myself, but in a house off campus. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, 
So, yeah. What's your What's your go to dish? So um, I make a lot of Ethiopian food. So my my favorite is uh, rice and thifsi, which is um, it's kind of like a meat um, meat sauce. It's not like a sauce, but it's like you know. Mm-hmm. It's like meat cut into cubes in like a broth of sorts, um, usually pretty spicy. And that's something my mom made all the time. And, and you know, I just like mixing that with rice and then uh, eating that. It's it's a lot of work, but I, I really enjoy doing it, like, you know, at least a couple or one, once a week or something. Oh, wow. Oh, and uh, how is your injera bread cooking skills? Good? <laughs> no, they are not good. I wish they were good, but I... <laughs> I am, I um, I, I know I usually get it from my mom, or if I'm like in Chicago for some reason, I'll I'll get it from there. But um, no, I don't have like any of the ingredients, and like even when I was at home, like and I had those ingredients, I just I I do it really badly. I don't know what's. I don't know. People <laughs> tell me like do this and this, and there's always something else I'm doing wrong. So I've never really managed to perfect it quite yet, but it's still really good. <laughs> <laughs> and and for those who don't know what injera bread is, can you can you explain? Give the the the, the brief yeah. explanation. Uh, it's a very like popular staple food in Ethiopia, and it's kind of like the base of um, a lot of the food that we do eat. So injera is like a spongy flat bread kind of thing, and um, you kind of like you you eat with the the injera, and like you kind of pick out other toppings that you have. So, for example, my mom likes putting a uh, thipsy. I mentioned omli, dinish, there's like spinach, potatoes, uh, yogurt, all this other stuff. And so you just kind of like grab the injera from the bottom of the plate and then grab the different toppings until like, you know, you eat the whole thing, basically. Um, I'm a huge fan. I really like it. And if I could cook it, I would, but can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so, yeah, it serves as like, well, the one time I had it in a restaurant, it serves almost as like your utensil, correct? Like you're scooping with it. Or did I do it wrong? Yeah. If I did exactly. it wrong, you can tell me. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. You like pick, you, yeah, you use the injera as, you know, as you would like, I don't know. It's, it's You're basically just eating with your hands with the injera. Yeah. Yeah. You grab it and then you like cup it to like grab the different foods. Yeah, so during quarantine, a lot of people got into cooking because they were sitting around their house not doing anything, and they would post the pictures on on Instagram. Did your cooking get better from March until now, or were you always solid? I think it's definitely improved a bit now that um, I've had more time to cook on my own. I think I was I was like I kind of knew how, but I wasn't really that good because I didn't get that much practice with it. But uh, as I got to like live on live just um you know without my mom to like kind of be there like watching over me i've kind of improved on like knowing how much of the different things i need and you know um what to add if i want to like spice things up or change things i can like you know adjust things in any way i want and i've like spanned out to like other foods that like you know aren't like just ethiopian foods but just you know other foods in general that i enjoy eating but like have never was never really taught before i'd look at a recipe and then i can kind of go off that and just you know see whatever spice or change it however i want i think i'm better at like kind of doing like um improvised cooking or something mm. that translates kind of well to running because you've been in a lot of races where you've had to improvise a bit to get to the finish line right <laughs> oh yeah absolutely there's definitely times where you're just like you know you have a plan going to a race and then you get there, it's just like, oh, well, this isn't really what I wanted, but. <laughs> no. Well, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking of two in particular. You know, the, the the DMR that you guys that you guys won, which DMRs are always unpredictable. But then I'm also thinking about in Austin when you, I believe you passed Justine Kipertich on the inside on the last stride. Is that am I remembering that correctly? Yes, that is correct. Uh, we had like gone over the going over like the whole race it was like i was in front for the most of it until like 200 meters to go and then um oliver Hoare and justine both just post both of them passed me and i was like oh crap i messed up and um they justin kind of like pulled away with like 100 to go and i you know just being there was like well i mean i'm just i'm just gonna go as fast as i can and see what happens and i noticed like a lot of like 
really good runners and like I, I do it too when like you're kind of running down a last stretch and you're kind of like by yourself you kind of like kind of go out to like the edge of lane one a little bit um mm -hmm. you know you kind of like swing wide just so like people don't pass you on whatever and i'm not really sure what i was thinking i wasn't like in my head like oh i can pass them on the inside i was kind of just like going and then you know i just i just kind of saw that and just kind of went for it and it it went well for me i guess <laughs> That is a uh, that's an understatement to say the least. I remember I remember talking to him afterwards, and he had forgotten. It wasn't until he was doing post race interviews that someone asked him, "Hey, did you feel Yared on the inside?" And he was like, he had a momentary realization that, "Oh man, I let him pass on the inside." Like he did exactly what you said. He, he drifted a bit, bit too far out there. It seems like mm -hmm. you have this just no this like innate nose for the. The finish line and your timing is is impeccable is that something that's innate to you yeah i think so i was even in high school i was always raised on like a like a last one best one mentality and like whenever i like see a finish line i think i just kind of like you know feel everything in my body like well we're almost done so like let's do this so like in the dmr like i didn't really start moving until like the last like 50 meters because you don't really see the finish until like 50 meters to go but like on the 1500, I was like going at it, like with a hundred meters to go. So I think, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, definitely not something I plan, but, uh, just kind of when I'm, when I'm there in the moment, I just, I don't know. I, I, it's like, I'm not even thinking at that point. It's just like, you know, as fast as I can and mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you, you put up some impressive times in, in high school. Obviously, otherwise you wouldn't have ended up uh, running for Notre Dame. But has any of your success surprised you? And if so, what 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 part of it has has been a shock to you? Um, I feel like most of it has been a big surprise to me. Coming <laughs> into Notre Dame uh, from high school, I was I was like really good in Kentucky, but I realized that um, at a national level, I wasn't like you know, like the best runner around quite yet. Um, and so going in, I really thought like, you know, I wasn't really thinking about like a national championship. And I was like, even if I do do that, that'll probably be like, you know, senior year or something, certainly not sophomore year, but you know, as the year progressed, that just became like more and more of a possibility when like our DMR got second my freshman year. And um, I, I really like, you know, wasn't, I wasn't like kind of going into college, like I'm gonna do this, this and this. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come have, you know, the best time I can have some fun and hopefully like do something kind of cool. And then I just kind of surpassed those expectations a lot, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you, uh, you definitely have done that. And your success is extended to, to cross country too. You won your, your opening meet last weekend. I believe you guys have, is it two more meets on the schedule this fall? Yeah, we do. We got a Louisville Classic and then ACCs. Mm -hmm. And what are you hoping to get out of that? Not everybody associates Myler with ability to, thr to thrive with the longer stuff, but I'm just thinking in recent history, Oliver Hoare, who you know, NCAA 1500 meter champion too, has run some really, really good times in, in cross country, been all American as well. Um, what, are your, what are your goals for those other two races? I think... Um, as as a as an individual, I definitely plan on like you know scoring really high to Louisville Classic. I'm not really sure who's going to be there. And um, at ACC, definitely like trying to win. I know I got runner up last year, and I think uh, I have a good shot to win if I'm not like um, being by like I could see like one of my teammates like Dylan or something kind of coming at me at that last race. But uh, I think as a team, though, I think we can definitely we definitely want to win ACCs again um, after we got like runner up last year and we won in my sophomore year. So I think we really want to like get back to being like the ACC champion and uh, performing really well in those races. Um, I never really have like a time goal for cross country races. I just kind of like going in and just seeing what happens based on the race. You know, I think. Like in a, going to a mile, there's like a short enough time to where you can kind of control that. But like for an AK, there is it's just like a lot of, you know, free time to just kind of like 
get lost. So I think a big part of AK is just competing. And um, so overall, I think I just want to compete to the best of my ability, whatever it is on that day. And I think uh, based on how, you know, I've raced and been training, I think that'll end up being something uh, really good. Are you guys treating ACC championships like the NCAA championships this year because it is the last meet of the season? Yeah, we are. My my coach talked about how like we always uh, climb to uh, November, but now we're climbing to the end of October. And so we're putting <laughs> like everything we have to exceeding um, or to peaking in uh, for ACCs just because, you know, there aren't any races after that. Like you said, it's just, uh, you know, we always want to like to be the best we can when it really matters. And normally that would be nationals, but this year it's ACCs. Other than mileage, why is it, the, do you think that some milers can thrive in cross country like yourself, like Oliver and like other ones, uh, and then others struggle? Is it, is it a mentality difference? Like what's the, so, so, some guys, you know, they, they are just like good at everything. And some milers, you see them in cross country and it seems like they're just ready for, ready for indoors, ready for outdoors. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a big uh, mentality thing. And it's kind of how your team treats cross country. Um, mm. You know, for me, I'm, I'm really fortunate to have a team that's so bought into like doing well in the cross country season. And I feel like I kind of get like, you know, swept into that. And that's like a big part of the reason I came was because Carlson was selling me on the whole, like, you know, we want to win like nationals. Like that's, that's what we want to do. We want to do really good in cross country. And that just like really inspired me and like continues to inspire me to just c keep on fighting, you know, to win that goal that we want. Um, I just like, I think a lot of, I don't, well, I don't really know, but I think other milers, they are kind of like focused on, if they're focused on like a more individual goal, then it's kind of harder for them to succeed in cross country because, you know, that's so much different than a mile. Um, but, you know, for me, I think a big part of that is just having uh, my big focus being on my team at all times, especially during cross country, but even during track. And, um, you know, because of that, when I do get to cross country, even if it is like a longer distance, I'm still really excited to race because, um, you know, I'm out there racing for my team, like as literally as possible. Like, you know, cause when you're doing it in track, it's like, yeah, I'm doing it for my team, but you know, in cross country, you're actually like, com actually, um, contributing to that team score and, um, you know, kind of being a part of something bigger than yourself, which is, I think really important if you want to do well in cross country. As of right now, the NCAA cross country championships have been rescheduled to the second week in March, right on top of the, the indoor season. Um, if given the, the choice, I know there's going to be a lot of decisions made between now and then, I mean, would you try to do both if possible? How would you manage that? Um, I probably wouldn't do both. I don't, <laughs> it's like indoors before cross country, right? Yeah, I think um, at that point, it's just like, you know, even though I do enjoy indoor and I, I could like probably perform like at a national level better there, I think, you know, for me, cross country has always been more fun because, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm out there doing it for my team. And also, you know, I have that prospect of, of just like, there's a lot like for me anyway, there's a lot more, um, competition since I'm not quite as like, I don't know, quite as great in cross country as I am in track. And I'm always going to seek out like more kind of competition and like more something to kind of push my boundaries. And on top of all that, like I said, I get to do that for an awesome team whose main goal has always been like doing well in cross country. So I think, I mean, obviously things are going to change and I don't know what, what's going to happen. But if I, if I could choose, I would definitely choose, uh, probably just cross country, uh, probably not both. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Even though you guys are the, the big favorites in the DMR, kind of the Kings of the DMR, uh, I'll say, cause I, I think you guys were probably going to get that title last year, which would have been back to back. And then you add in the, the second place finish from, from the year before you'd still go, you'd still go cross though. I respect that move.
I respect it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it also probably helps that, you know, keep, keeps you, keeps you fresh so that way you can get sharp again for, for outdoors and then heading into the, the trials as well, because it's like, there's very little racing opportunities. And then if things open back up, then it's going to be like a whole bunch of racing opportunities between March, April, May, and, and June. It's going to be tough to, to, to game that out. Have you guys planned that far ahead in terms of calendar stuff, or is it just too unpredictable right now? I think uh, we're definitely kind of waiting to see where things go. Um, at least I personally haven't been told of any like plans. I don't know what my coach loves looking into the future, but I'm just kind of more focused on what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so um, I I don't really I don't really know of any or have any um, big plans that far in the future. Right now we're just focused on like you know doing well at ACC. It's what we know we have in front of us. Mm -hmm. If you do get you know, if we do get a full season outdoors, you mentioned wanting to get in some, some fast races. Is there a time that you have in mind for the 1500 outdoors? Oof. Um, I think my, I don't know. I want to get like the Olympic standard. One of the, one of the standards, I forget what the name is. Uh, <laughs> but I think, it's around, I think it's around like 335, I think is um, pretty reasonable for me in my, in my senior year. Oh, Man, this is great. So not only are you not keeping up with the the, the best runners in the world, you're, you're still trying to figure out the, the times that you need to hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, I don't have time to be like, I don't know, going too much into it. It's not my not my my wheelbarrow, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> three, three, 335. Three, 335 is the Olympic standard, just in case you, you need to know that. But you might need to know that for your future. Uh, you mentioned before you're taking an Italian class. Do you, do you speak? Are you fluent? Oh, I wouldn't say fluent, but <laughs> I definitely say I, I'm an Italian minor, um, so I have like oh, a wow. good a sense of the language. Um, I more excel at like reading and writing because um, that's like I was in like Latin throughout high school, and so we never really spoke like Latin that much. So for me, um, reading and writing came really easy, and that's like kind of what I excel at. But I can still do a little bit of speaking. <laughs> so why did you choose Italian of all the languages? I originally chose Latin because that's what I wanted to do uh, moving forward. But um, I think that kind of interfered with like my practice schedule or it, it was something was wrong with my freshman schedule that wouldn't allow me to do that. Um, I didn't really have like a lot of choice that first semester. They just kind of throw you in whatever classes. And so they just kind of, I think Italian was like my second choice. So they just kind of put me in Italian. Um, and then as I kind of did it more, I have like three I had to take three courses as like a requirement for my major. But um, as I went through those three courses, I was just like really, I don't know, the language and the culture just like really excited me. Um, you know, being a runner, I'm a huge pasta guy. And um, <laughs> even <laughs> beyond that, I, uh, I just really enjoy, um, I don't know, I think the language is like really cool. And I've been to Italy before, so I really enjoyed mm. uh, that country. And so I decided that, you know, I'm like pretty close to a minor already. Why not just go for it? All right. All right. What's the, in terms of Latin, what's the utility in learning Latin? Is it just because it's a bridge to other languages? What's the, what's the selling point on, on learning Latin? Hmm. Uh, for me in high school, I did Latin because I thought Spanish was really basic and French was really hard to speak. So I was like, well, that just leaves Latin. Uh, and I thought, I think like Latin, people who take Latin are like a specific kind of breed, I think. Like, you know, they're not, they're not. <laughs> <What do you laughs> like, I, like, I don't know, like, I feel like everyone who takes Latin has this like the right amount of like weirdness in them. So like, I'm definitely pretty weird. Um, and, you know, everyone else I, in my Latin class was kind of the same way. So I think for me, the selling point of Latin was more just like the other people in the class uh, rather than the actual language itself. But, um, you know, I think it's a pretty cool language anyway. I, I hardly remember any of it now, but I still okay. think it was a fun time. Is there an amount of languages you want to learn before, like in the next next 10 years? Like, because I feel like once you get a like one or two under your belt, doesn't it start to pick up speed, especially if they're, you know, like in the romance language category? That's what they say, but I'm, I'm not like a huge 
language isn't like my my forte so i'm like even in like english i'm just like oh my god so i'm i'm not a huge i don't have any huge plans i just want to like kind of kind of keep the italian i do have in the future so if i do go to italy again which hopefully i will then um i'll still have like kind of some of that going for me <laughs> what's your you said italian was a minor what's your major uh i major in biochemistry okay so you're busy i'm busy yes <laughs> not <laughs> not quite as busy as like freshman and sophomore year was because those were more uh that's kind of when they try and like weed out all the other people in there but um i think you know it's definitely like you know difficult but not not the most unmanageable thing in the world i've always i'm i kind of have like a advantage because i've always liked science like but um you know i think it's it's manageable okay what's the in that field what's the the career goal what's the non-running career goal mm. uh for me that's always been dental school um there's a lot of other ways to do that, but I just kind of chose biochemistry because I thought it was an interesting topic in general. Um, but I think for growing up for the longest time, I always wanted to go uh, into dental school and be an orthodontist. So, um, you know, biochemistry really sets you up well for that kind of getting ready, getting you ready for all the, the science you're going to have to endure in dental school. But Interesting. Orthodontist. I got to ask why, why that career jumped out to you? <laughs> well, it's a very common interview question, so I have an answer. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so for me, uh, a big part of it was growing up when I had to get, um, braces, I had like really, really bad teeth. Um, and so my doctor, Dr. Woods was like, honestly, like one of the best people I'd ever met in my life when I was like 12 or 13. Mm. Uh, and, you know, he just seemed like so fun, like so happy about his job, like every time I went to go see him. And I knew like kind of early on, like I thought, you know, I think I kind of wanted to be a doctor right now. I'm not sure, but, you know, I don't know what kind of doctor I would be. And he's like, oh, you could be like an orthodontist. That's what I am. And I was like, mm -hmm. wow, that sounds like very cool. <laughs> and so later on, I actually went back um, uh, like a year ago to shadow him. Um, and, you know, he still like seems like he loves what he does and getting to know more of like the specific processes has like been really cool. And, um, you know, as I've done that more and learned more about it, it's, it's only gotten more appealing to me, uh, you know, despite dental school and all the other stuff that you have to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the orthodontist office when I was little too. I was uh, a braces, retainer, even headgear. Did you ever have to wear headgear? Oof, at no, night thank god i didn't wear headgear <laughs> <laughs> that was an experience when you when you strap that thing in before you go to bed and you wake up and the back of your teeth feel like they're gonna fly out the back of your head that's just uh that's painful uh yeah that's man okay so let's let's run through this again yared Nagus, fast 1500 meter runner lover of cooking strong in ethiopian cooking but improving in the injera department uh prospective yeah. orthodontist <laughs> and a comfortable reader and speaker in Italian. Is that it? Do we get everything? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I don't know. I really like ice cream too. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> strong, strong, strong take there. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we appreciate it. I know it's uh, hectic on campus and you got a lot going on, but uh, congrats on your success so far. Good luck uh, in the remaining two cross country meets and uh health and happiness to to you and your team yeah thank you so much and to you the same thanks for having me